Those who wish may sit down now. Welcome. My name is Tom Simpson, a friend of the 385 Army Cadets. From the first visit to the Vimy Ridge Wall at the Provincial Legislature in 2009, the cadets have observed the Battle of Vimy on April the 9th, or the closest Monday to that, each year. For the cadets to march from the historic Army on St. Lawrence Street to Municipal Office on Alperna Street to do a Vimy Ridge proclamation along with the municipality of Senator Hastings and raise the cadet flag. As this is the 100th anniversary, we felt it was more important to refocus on those who gave the ultimate sacrifice by failing the plaque and the proclamation of Vimy Ridge. At this time, I would like to call the local historian, Mr. Brock Kirby, to give a brief history of the Vimy Ridge. Brock? Good afternoon. The early morning of April 9, 2017 marks the 100th anniversary of Canada's involvement in Vimy Ridge. Many, many brave men went over the top that Easter morning not knowing what lied ahead of them. Vimy Ridge is known as one of the greatest battles led by Canadians. With four Canadian and one British division, they embarked on a three-day battle that was heavily strategized and planned. Under, that fire, under the fire of thousands of guns, Canadians charged into battle with one task in mind, to capture the ridge. This led to Canadian success that no other nation could accomplish. This came at a heavy toll which paid the price of many men and injuries. Uh, over 11,000 men were either casualty or killed. This includes beloved fathers and sons of Maydock and Huntington. Uh, the, the tragedy of the battle and the countless victims claimed by this conflict should never be forgotten. Thank you. This time, I'd like to call on Captain Roy Matichotti and Mayor Tom DeLine.
100th anniversary of Bibby Ridge. And as you just heard from your local historian, Brock Kirby, that's what's on the plaque. In June of this year, we'll also do one more thing, and that is recognize the 385 Army Cadets for 65 years in our community. So we'll be doing it again with their history and at the back of this plaque. So thank you very much. At this time, in time I can have to ask everybody to stand for a moment of silence. Indicated, this is an annual event and it just happens on April the 9th in the Ridge is today. Tomorrow night though the Army Cadets will be marching again, <coughs> excuse me, to the municipal office to do raising of the cadet flag and a proclamation. But this time I'd ask that the cadet place the Army Cadet flag in the holder. As tradition, I'd ask Mayor Tom DeLine to read out the proclamation. Thank you, Tom. On behalf of the municipality, I'd like to take an opportunity to welcome everyone here today. And I'll just do the proclamation, whereas for the first time of the history, the Royal Canadian Army Cadets will commemorate the Battle of Vimy Ridge. And whereas on the 9th of April, 1917, Canadian soldiers began what would become to be known as the Battle of Vimy Ridge. And whereas from that day until the end of the battle on April the 12th, more than 3,500 young Canadians fighting on the ground, below the ground and in the air, <coughs> laid down their lives and another 7,000 were wounded. And whereas this was the first time that all four divisions of the Canadian Expeditionary Force had fought together along with the Royal Flying Corps thus becoming a national symbol of achievement and sacrifice. And whereas young members of the Royal Canadian Army Cadets will learn of our military heritage by recognizing and honoring the accomplishments of the Canadian this April 9th, 2017. One big word, two words, lest we forget. Sorry. If I 
can now ask Captain uh, Roy Benichowski to come say a few words in regards to the Treaty 5 Army Connection. On behalf of the Treaty 5 Army Cadets, I extend a, a heartfelt welcome to all those who, who found time in their hearts and their busy days to come here today to commemorate Vimy Ridge, an historical part in Canada's development and the birth of a nation. I also thought it was important for the cadets to participate as it spells out their history and their heritage. Last year, Tom Simpson came to me and he said, you know, it's a hundred year anniversary for the cadets planning something special. I wanted to say, yes, we are. We weren't sure what we were going to do. So with a little collaboration and uh, the end result being this plaque, the cadets were given an opportunity to do some homework on Vimy Ridge also uh, do some brainstorming as far as designing uh, different things that they, they may like to see on the plaque. So they had an opportunity for some input on this as well because it was something that cadets wanted to do for Vimy. And I, I thank those who participated, I thank those who are here today, and I thank Mr. Simpson for giving us that opportunity to make everything come through. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on uh, Legion uh, 363 Jack Frost to say a few words regards to the branch. Good afternoon. Certainly, it's an honor and it's a privilege for the Royal Canadian Legion to be able to take part in the dedication of this plaque commemorating the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The Legion as in most other civilians, in the glorifying war, remember those who made this great sacrifice. You know, a hundred years ago, on a cold and snowy morning, when 15,000 men went over the top, and three days later, 3,598 they dead, 7,000 wounded. What a terrible loss to this country, our sons and daughters. You know, Brigadier General Arthur Ross, he remarked shortly after the war, he said, in those few moments, I witnessed the birth of a nation. Those men and women who went over the top they didn't go for kings and countries, or kings and queens, or politicians. They went for their comrades, they went for their families, and they went for the way of life that we enjoy yet today. And veterans everywhere across this country, and other countries as well, the, those I have spoken to, they all have one common request, that we remember the sacrifices they've made for the stability of this great nation that we have. And I believe it's incumbent upon us to ensure that those wishes are carried forward. We will remember them. Thank you. And if I could uh, ask to come forward our MP, Federal Representative, Mr. Mike Bossy, to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Frost, for those kind uh, words. Uh, true words were spoken. Um, it's an honor to be here today and a privilege uh, to represent the government of Canada uh, in uh, our remembrance of this uh, um, historic feat of our country. As many have uh, communicated, uh, uh, this uh, brought together uh, for the first time uh, the four uh, divisions of the Canadian Corps uh, in one battle uh, to, to turn the tide of the war. Um, you know, up until that point of April 9th, uh, 2017, uh, was to try to take the Bridge and uh, unsuccessful. Um, in the autumn of, uh, 20, of, uh, of uh, 1916, uh, the four, four Canadian divisions came to Bimmy Ridge uh, and uh, prepared for the next six months through drills, through tunneling, through creating, uh, rebuilding, and their trenches and, and, and the like 
uh, leading up to the week before uh, they, they, they went over the top, over a million shells were dropped in that area. Just imagine for a second, you're 17, 18, 19, 30, 40 years old, you've got loved ones and you've got families, you've got children uh, back home that you're thinking about and you spent months in a trench uh, with rats and lice and fleas and, and, and then you've got a million shells that are dropping all around you and you've got to, you've got to summon up the courage to head over the top to fight for your country, to fight for the way of life that we all love and, and, and that we all want to continue with and to stop a, a country uh, that was that was set upon the rest of the world to try to to rule the world. I can't even imagine what was going through their minds in that moment. And then they, they they go over the top, and they've got to have the presence of mind to make sure that they get so far and they stop, and they wait for the next round of shells to drop, and and to 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 keep the Germans pinned down. And then they go another distance and they stop, and they wait for the next barrage. Uh, incredible, incredible perseverance and sacrifice uh, that these individuals make. Uh, that I, 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 like I said, it just it stuns me when I, th when I see uh, the videos uh, from that day and when I see the, uh, the incredible monument that is there today. There were four Canadians that earned the Victoria Cross uh, that day of the 15 to 20,000 that went over the top. Private William Mill, Lance Sergeant Ellis Siffin, uh, Captain Lane McDowell, and Private John Pattison. Uh, these are heroes that we should all try to remember and, and recognize uh, the, 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 the sacrifice. And they, and they sacrificed in, not just to, to defeat the enemy, but also to save their comrades who are, who are injured uh, and dying on the field to try to drag them back to safety so that they could go back home to their loved ones. Incredible feats of courage that these individuals showed. 100,000 Canadians served that day. There were 10,600 casualties and 3,600 fatal on the field. Um, by the end of World War I, a country of 8 million people sent 650,000 men and women to Europe to fight for our rights and freedom. 66,000 of those uh, lost their lives, and 170,000 came home injured. We have to remember this every single moment to remember the sacrifices that so many made so that we can enjoy the rights and freedoms that we have today. Thank you all for being here today to recognize them. I'd also like to invite our friend, Mr. Todd Smith, or MPP of the province, to come forward. Thanks, Tom, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, Many have uh, told the stories already, I won't uh, recount them, uh, but there were some incredible sacrifices made during those three days. Uh, our colleagues, uh, Mike's colleagues and, and some of my colleagues are actually at Vimy today. Uh, they were fortunate enough to be chosen to, to make that trip uh, to the shores just north of uh, Paris, where that incredible monument stands. If you had a chance this morning to see some of the broadcast, it's quite a remarkable statue and cenotaph and monument uh, to honor the sacrifice of Canadians on those three days. It's a beautiful day there today. It was an incredible ceremony. Um, I think everyone understands the sacrifice uh, that was made and just how important that that battle was to the turning of the tide, as Mike mentioned just a moment ago. But it certainly didn't look anything that day like it did this morning. It was a beautiful blue sky and it seemed like it was nice. I saw the, the princes, they were there and wearing just a top coat and, and making their presentations. It was a cold winter day. The snow was falling. The rain was falling. They were crawling around in muck as Mike described and the tacit smell of mortar fire was just an incredible, incredible battle that they had on their hands. Uh, but it was one that really, I think, defined our country of Canada. The men, not much older than this group of young men and women before us here today, went and fought in that battle. And uh, they came from Nova Scotia, and they came from Quebec, and they came from Ontario. But when they returned home, uh, they were Canadians, as Mr. Frost mentioned just a few moments ago. So we commend uh, 
those who gave the ultimate sacrifice on that day. We will remember them, and uh, we must remember them. It was a hundred years ago, and it's important, Tom, and the entire team with the Cadet Corps, that we take the time out to remember on these very, very important occasions the commitment that our forefathers made and the, and the sacrifices that they made so that we can be here today and enjoying the life of this country. So thank you for, uh, for hosting this again, Tom. I, it's, it's most important. And thank you all for coming out and recognizing just how important uh, this battle was on this day 100 years ago. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, I'd like to thank the St. Aracens Police Department for coming out today, from the firefighters and certainly the uh, Maydock Legion for attending. It's all important for seeing you here. More importantly, the community Army Cadets. Thank you to all attending. Uh, Municipality of St. Aracens, always very supportive. Here at Tom DeLine, Branch 363, Jack Cross, historian Brock Kirby, a uh, local historian, has done a great uh, job here. I just remind everybody that after the ceremonies today, uh, down on Main Street, there's the old piece of cable used to be. There's a beautiful display of Bibby Rings there and some other uh, items about uh, Bibby that Brock has put together. So please join him down there. He has a, a video as well as the uh, Madoc uh, Lions Club. I've got some refreshments down there for you as well. And certainly I'd like to thank uh, uh, Terry Pigden, who's always here supporting any events that the 385 Army Cadets have. At this time, I would like to call on Mr. Bob Watson. Thank you very much and please join us down on Main Street to, to refreshments and see 